Hi, chat room. Hi, guys. Hello, you guys. How are you? Um, let's see. Whoop, let me make sure. Why is this? Just a, sometimes it gets all, all it gets all cattywampus, as my mom would say. And I don't like it. I wish it was. I wish there was a way I could just set it up and it would just be consistent. But you know, whatever. I just every time I try to, but there's always some slight moving parts because I'm always. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what really throws a monkey wrench in the show for me. And this is a well it's something we'll have to solve when uh, we have, um, you know, the millions of subscribers uh, that this that this dickhead has. Okay, so. Some of you have been keeping up on this. Some of you may know. Some of you may not. Um, uh, if I can... Um, let me explain. No, there's not enough time. Let me sum up. Uh, Humper think of marrying Buttercup in a little less than half an hour. So we have to uh, raid the castle, uh, uh, save the princess, and escape uh, after I kill Count Rugen. All right. Um, I started crying. So did I, Georgina. Um, um, <laughs> I got to think about people not steaming their flags. It's a thing. All right, uh, we're going to get another conversation. So uh, if you don't know, um, uh, apparently uh, he's under an attack by the deep state. Yeah, that's that's the only way I can put it. I'm just, just as my neck is clearing up, this asshole comes to give me another pain in the neck. Um, so Russell Brand, long, um, you know, uh, one of the skeevy pervs out there, and uh, let's let's be abundantly clear. I, I, I always have to set a baseline with these things, and I always hate that you have to do this, but I think it's smart. Um, in in the broad expression of, expression of human sexuality, there's a lot from vanilla to ro to Rocky Road, if you know <laughs> know what I'm saying. And I, I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. And as long as whatever you're doing is consensual, or uh, you know you have a, a good solid safe word, and everybody's an adult. I don't care. I don't care if you're, if it's like, I, as long if it's prostitution and that's your thing, I don't care. As long as they're not being trafficked and whatever, uh, right? If they're there by their own choice as well, cool, whatever. Um, it's, it's up to you as adults. Adult sexual behavior is just that. And I don't want to, and this is, I'm talking to you, Lauren Bobert. I don't want to see it though. I don't want to see you groping you, your date's crotch while he's fondling your titties in the middle of Beetlejuice the fucking musical. Jesus Christ. At least save it for like Ka or one of these semi-erotic Cirque du Soleil things where nobody's paying any attention because there's some light nudity on stage. Jesus Christ, it's Beetlejuice the fucking musical. Also, her her excuse that she was exuberant and singing along, I, I no. It's just the first time she saw it. Insofar as I know, you don't, it was, it wasn't a musical to start with, asshat. Okay. I, I mean, I have my thing with movies turned into musicals that weren't in the first part, but whatever. All right. That said, if it's, if you're consenting at all, and I don't care what those edges are, Jesus Christ, if you're into just freaky shit and you find freaky shit partner uh, and it's, uh, I don't care. It's between the two of you or the three of you or the seven of you or whoever's paying for the body oil. I don't know. It's none of my business. As someone who's been to the Playboy Mansion multiple times, and uh, and after was it the fourth, uh, fifth time? Fifth time I went. Let me just say it. Uh, it was it was what it said on the tin. Um, and being amongst you know uh, fucking adults, knowing where they are in an adult environment, doing that whatever I don't care. However, the minute. You start uh, bumping into 16-year-old girls in public and then saying, I think the quote is, I don't care if you're 12, I just want to know where I'm at legally, meaning, I guess, parental permission in that situation. Um, oh, by the way, if you're uh, new to the show, I jumped right in. I'm Hal Sparks. This is Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. I am the deep state. I am the democratic machine. Uh, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. All the things. We'll get my little show, which I have 56,000 YouTube subscribers. I have a couple hundred, a few hundred uh, people on Twitch. We got uh, 90,000 on the Facebook page. We're not doing too shabby. This guy, 
has uh, 1.4 million followers on Rumble and 6 million on YouTube. Now, heavy drop-off uh, lately. I want to say that number was equal or close to 3 million or something, and it's taken a shit in the last little bit. Um, title of this video is, So This Is Happening. And what's happening is, is that the chickens are coming home to roost. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, the BBC has been working on a report for four years on this dude. And they have been slow walking it, arguably, because he used to work there. And some of the shit that happened, happened while he was working at the BBC. So, to prob somewhere between wanting to cross their T's and dot their I's and not uh, anger their bosses and not give the BBC a bad reputation. There's a lot of reasons why they were slow walking this shit. Okay. At one point, and I, you know, I've heard, I've seen clips of this, but I haven't seen the whole thing. He talks about how he was promiscuous. Okay. This has nothing to do with promiscuity. Okay. Uh, pedophilia is not unique to gays or straight people. It isn't. There are, they're on both sides, both across the spectrum of this. There's some equal opportunity offenders in that. This, that has nothing to do with being homosexual or heterosexual, heterosexual, nothing. Any more than, again, you know, uh, the, uh, well, <laughs> it's a, it's a totally different category. It's kind of like saying, um, uh, it's the difference between um, choking someone to death and being really good at opening a jar of peanut butter. It might be the same actual grip, but it has a whole different use and an entire different mindset along with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, uh, and again, he's a constant Trump defender. Trump partied with Epstein for two decades, but had no idea. But, oh, Jimmy Savile all over again. He did an interview with Jimmy Savile. Let me, I'll, I might be able to dig that up. Um, or, uh, CSL, see if you can find the, the, he did a radio interview, I think. It's not very long. It's like he just, he called Jimmy Savile up and got him on the phone. And the, and Jimmy Savile, if you don't know, is like one of the worst, like, pedophile predators in the history of the UK. Just an awful monster. Was never charged. Um, died, you know, uh, without ever having, seeing the inside of a courtroom about what he did. Um, so, uh, thanks. I, I'm glad you like the analogy. I was, that's, that's straight off the top of my head, but I think it's a good one or whatever. Just because the physical actions might be the same, it does not mean that the, the meaning of the actual thing. So, anyways, this dickhead, he might have, you know, again, these are allegations, and I'm totally comfortable saying these are allegations. And, and most of it's in this documentary and in the court of public opinion. However, as of today, one of the women or another woman beyond the four, I'm not sure because uh, they're anonymous under uh, British law, so it's either one of the four or a fifth is charging him for sexual assault it, from a, uh, an encounter in 2003. Um, now, Danny Masterson, who just went down for the, you know, for being a horrible, 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 horrible monster. Um, individually, the women that he had attacked, um, he might not have gotten any time for the single sexual assaults if they'd have come to him, you know, they, because the cases would have had to have been, you know, the, the, like corroboration, the fact that they were isolated and that he drugged them and that they were alone in rooms and they couldn't say and blah, blah, blah. It would have been very hard to get him on time, but because it was a concern, they showed that there were multiple attacks and that you had women corroborating what act who didn't know each other, corroborating what had happened to them. And the, the, the accounts were very similar. Um, and, uh, and other people, obviously witnesses as well. It meant that he spent, he went to jail for life. Um, that said, uh, there is a big, um, there's a, um, you may disagree, but the age of consent is 16 in Great Britain. I agree. Uh, it, it is. The, the problem he has is that 
it's not BBC policy, and he sent his BBC limo to get her at school. Also, and I don't know if it's parental consent or, like, parents can be okay with it or what have you, but either way, um, grooming a 16-year-old, and then ultimately she says, even though she was, like, the age of consent, maybe 16 there, that he uh, crossed her lines and she told him no on several occasions and he did it anyways. Um, yeah. So lots of, lots of stuff in this, but let's see what he has to say. Barf, barf. By the way, this is his only video for the last three days. He apparently got a standing ovation at one of his dipshit shows in the UK when all these things came out, but he has not been insofar as I know live streaming and there has not been a video up other than this one, uh, this was, yeah, uh, when was, when did he, yeah, three days ago, and before that, um, like, that's it. This is the top video on his, on his, uh, Rumble channel right now, and Rumble's his primary outlet. So, um, and, and I'm curious, like, what his sales pitch is, you know, hello, you fucking... 2 million, 1.4, 1.3, 1.2 million, 1.1 million. Fuck, where's everybody going? Um, how his energy shifts considering the uh, the heft of the topic. Let's let's find out, shall we? Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now this is... Mm -hmm. Hello, you Awakening Wonders. Now let's get to the point. I can't do my pitch right now. You Awakening Wonders to the fact that I'm a complete fucko. Isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where? Ooh. Anybody? Anybody see what? Fuck it. Ah. Uh, anybody see right out of the fucking gate? Who's we, motherfucker? Who's we? This is as loud as the video goes. He's probably turned the audio down on. Yeah, his talent agency and his uh, PR person has dropped him. His talent agent said he lied uh, and maintained his innocence all these times, but they've just they've cut him off entirely. Who? This isn't the this is the kind of video we make. Oh, it isn't we. Oh, we. Yeah, yeah. We critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption because in this story, I am the news. I we we do that. We do that. Me by myself, but we received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email. One from a mainstream media TV company. I see. So just one from a mainstream media company, the fucking BBC. Just say the BBC company. One from a newspaper listing a. Uh, yeah, so the, the Times and the BBC did this in coordination, and they both sent him like a, hey, just a heads up, if you want to reply to this, or you want to film something for this, this is the shit, and this is what we're going to talk about, and you can come on here and say anything you want. We will give you the ability to rebut this stuff on camera litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff like Egregious and aggressive attacks, including stupid stuff. Okay, egregious and aggressive. That, I mean, right out of the gate, it's, uh, I'm being pummeled. I am being egregiously attacked. I, uh, I'm gonna guess that if you go by how the BBC usually works and how these organizations work, this is what we're going to run. We're going to run this story. We've got these people saying this thing. You could say your piece. Uh, th you know, feel free to contact us through your representatives or by yourself. Da, 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 uh, sincerely, whomever. Not, hey, Rapey McRaperson, fuck are you doing? Getting outed. Like, what What do they think? All right. Egregious. Like, shit. This is the attacks. And again, there's only two ways to take that. Either the paper because they sent him this heads up and a request for comment is the egregious attacker or the women are. Like uh, my community festival should be stopped that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on the- <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go out. Of, all right, I've, I've seen part of the BBC uh, documentary 
and I have seen the, I've seen the article. Oh, Therese, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Love to you. And Jonathan, thanks for pointing it out. It, I, I was dealing with this asshole and I didn't see it at the time. So thank you so much. <laughs> so, all right. Say that. Watch watch this description again. Extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narrative. Okay, yeah. First of all, I don't know about the community thing should be stopped. I think that's just because a sexual predator probably shouldn't want, they should. They don't want a bunch of fucking um, randos in a, locked in a room with this dickhead because he has a little massage and yoga meditation circles might be a little skeevy but it, whatever but the whole like he shouldn't be allowed to attack the mainstream media th no one said that they might say that it's rich that he's doing it and one of the reasons he's doing it is because he's been he's seen these fucking headlights in his rearview mirror for a very long time and he's like if i start attacking the media now no matter when these charges make their way to the surface, I'll I'll just claim victimhood. I'll just claim that they've been after me this whole time. Also, my um uh my uncle who passed away today and my cousin um who are invaluable resources to me when I need to talk about law enforcement stuff, especially when it comes to people telling the truth or whatever. There's a thing that they look for in an interview called the four whites, the four whites. That is, you can see all four whites of your eyes, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. When your eyes are that wide open, when you're telling your story and you're, you're doing it so they can literally see the whites at the bottom, top, left, and right of your eyes, you're uh, somewhere between enraged and scared shitless and are actively trying to bullshit your way out of the situation. Now, again, this is it, it, different people have a different baseline of behavior. So this may just be his, his like, I, I'm really just a sick little boy bullshit that he pulls whenever he fucks up with a mate or a, uh, a parent or a friend. This might just be his fallback and it works for him and it has worked for him. So it's like a well-developed habit. But I, this looks like, remember the scene in Snatch when they're like, if you see, uh, uh, when you look up and you're about to be run over by, by a car and you, you could just, all you do is pull a stupid face. But the pikey, he didn't pull a stupid face because he had plans on running the car over. Remember like that part of it where you just like winch, you know, this is that face. That's the pull a stupid face. This is a man, this is deer in the headlights. Yeah. ...on this channel, but amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks. Astonishing. Well, they are astonishing. That would be a, another form of outrageous, if I may say so. Yeah. Are some very serious allegations. Uh huh. That I absolutely refute. These allegations, but refute versus deny. Okay. Came to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies, and as I've written about. Ex yeah, I was like having a good time. And when I was having a good time, I was doing rapey McRapers and stuff. And, uh, you know, now that I'm doing a, like a podcast sort of hippie Alex Jones thing, I'm not quite as fuckable as I used to be. I can't, I reek a patchouli and I've got, and you can see my ribs through my shirt. And uh, that used to be cute. And now it's a bit creepy. Extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, Promiscuous has nothing to do with anything. Pr promiscuous is not in the category. No one is slut shaming this motherfucker. And the fact that he brings it up, it sounds like a humble brag. During that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. Well, the relationships might have been. How are the one night stands? Also, uh, how about the people you picked up that you didn't consider to be relationships? Like, you know, is a side piece a relationship? Right? I was always transparent about that then. Almost too transparent. I oh yeah, it's your fucking fault. I shouldn't have told you all this stuff, but I did. And also it wasn't the transparency, it was your descriptives of it. And 
uh, how you your attitude towards sex, not just being cavalier, but at times gross, leaning into the angrily perverse that made people go, the fuck, what? What was that part? That's weird. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And are you though? See that oh wait, was that an edit or? Two that... shits I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always. Ooh, there was an. Was there an edit between always and consensual? As I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. They were. Holy shit. Did you see that? Did he have trouble getting that line out the first time? Or did they ha he put another qualifier in and his editor was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That doesn't sound good. Always, if I felt like it. Look at that shit. Let's, let's see that one more time, kids. Movies, and as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then. Jesus. That's fucking gnarly. Dude, do it in one roll, man. Stop and go back. And don't make a cut right there. Of all the places to have a fucking edit. Extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. Look at that. Always consensual. Da -da. Whoops. I was always transparent about that then. Almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And Are you? Ooh, edit again. The relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then. Almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely... Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, first of all, another edit. Second, um, his transparency did not metastasize into a cancer of these accusations. He wasn't open about the fact that he shoved one woman up against a wall and and raped her. And then she had to go to a rape crisis center and he texted her and said, sorry about that. I thought you were into it and it was my bad. And oops. He wasn't transparent about that. He never talked about that. We're only finding out about it now. Being transparent about the fact that you're getting a lot of ass is in some ways a, 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 a defensive way of of covering if you are engaged in this kind of shit because it creates the illusion you're like why would he need to do that he gets all the sex he could possibly want unless you're an addict and you have no feeling towards the person that you want to be with and you just want to you know whatever yeah but in theory that's the that's the idea it's why in many ways it's why women feel more comfortable around a confident man it's more, why they're more sexually attracted to like the bad boy type. Because the bad boy type, in theory, has options. The nice guy might fuck you whether you want to or not. The guy who's trying to play like hippie boyfriend and sensitive. A lot of times, girls are put off by that. Not because it's not a character trait they don't like. It's because they don't trust it. And that's where the stalkers come from. Bad boys are like, all right, see ya. Um, you know, it's easier when you have somebody who's like... Uh, again has options to feel like this he's not gonna kill me or get jealous or stalk me or any of that shit the nice guy might the weak guy might but they won't so the you know he's he's basically using that kind of i'll get it all the time i'll get it so much i'm a lot bored with it deny makes me question is there another agenda at play particularly when we've no Particularly nothing. No, you don't get to hide behind. Look, what, nobody went after Jimmy Swaggart because he was a Christian, because they didn't like the denomination of Christianity that he was, or that he had conservative family values. It's because he was a lying asshole and a hypocrite. And, and that hypocrisy made him a lot of money. That's why. I've seen coordinated media attacks before. Okay, they're not coordinated media attacks. It's it's a dual investigation. They do it all the time, specifically about big cases like this, like Jimmy Savile, like other stuff. Get the fuck out of here. 
It, the rest of the world isn't like, okay, guys, everybody, get ready your Russell Brand attack stories. If they did, they wouldn't, A, have to reference the primary story. They'd have talked to the witnesses themselves or had their own angle on it. Or we could, we reached out and spoke to them a week ago, uh, knowing that the, uh, the, because we got our memo from the fucking Times and the BBC. People are responding because he's famous and because he's got a huge internet following and because he's fucking gross. Or, like, with Joe Rogan, when he did to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of and we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language I'm that's because there's only so many ways to describe what an asshole he is in short order in english the variety or the broad vocabulary in mainstream media is not the sign of uh, coordinated attacks like sinclair media does where they literally give you an entire script uh, like the, the horse pace thing and the ivermectin part of it and the horse pace thing, by the way, attributed more to him because of his, the belief that he used steroids and there's this kind of uh, allegorical link of steroids to like stuff from uh, horse testicles and that goes way back. It's kind of like this linear mythology around that that's easy to poke at and, and use as a point for, uh, you know, as a joke. But it wasn't a coordinated attack. They were all looking at the same shit. If you look... We're not, we're talking about, we're not talking about four blind men describing an elephant. We're talking four people, reporters, describing an elephant. It's, that's all. It's not coordinated. They're all looking at the same thing. They all watched the same report. Aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell. They're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand. You're getting too close to the truth. Fuck me. Jesus Christ. That, no, not, not you. Appa other people are getting too close to the truth. Was this asshole think, you know, Danny Masterson was a rogue that they went after Bill Cosby or Harvey Weinstein because they were telling truths the deep state didn't want to hear? Get the fuck out of here. Like, the, I, I gotta say, like, it's one thing to kind of deny and say, you know, these are misinterpretations or lies directly or attacks on me and in my character for money or for fame or for reach or whatever. But once it gets to like the kind of Illuminati level, get the fuck out of here. Did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Because you are, and because you were particularly pernicious in your disgusting support of Vladimir Putin and anti-vax shit. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. To get a comment on stories about how fucking weird you got. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I then why, why, why aren't they drumming up fucking rape charges on fucking everybody on Rumble? Why, why? There's doesn't, he's not, the, uh, you know what I'm most offended by in this line of reasoning besides it's just fucking gross? Is that this asshole thinks he's original. This, he's just dovetailing behind David Icke. Alex Jones wasn't, they didn't drum up fake charges about shit on him, he actively attacked the Sandy Hook families and actively had his people, you know, essentially attacking them because their children never existed in the first fucking place. And he was an asshole about it. And he kept doing it. Until he was served papers and then he tried to walk it back. I'm like, no, no, no. That didn't mean you're innocent now. I realized the error of my ways. How? The billion dollar lawsuit. Okay, so you didn't really. You just, now you're just in a defensive position. I mean, my voice along with your voice. I don't. No, no, no. Hey, again. Who's we, motherfucker? Why is his audience now a part of this? Why is it their voice? I got a new, I got news for you. Any member of his audience can for free start a Rumble channel and stream on there, say the same shit he's saying. And the BBC isn't going to do a, a one-hour documentary on them being raping McRaperson and have, you know, witnesses and victims come out of the fucking woodwork.
Because they didn't do anything. Oi. I don't mind them using my books and my stand-up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses... There's another edit there. ...whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Uh-huh. Um, look, it was a... a the the times of london i think it was and uh the bbc did a they were both looking at the story there'd been this like uh, known uh known um in the comedy world in england and at bbc about his behavior and him being a masher and whatever but then him crossing the line and it getting ugly and it was just known and it, they were like eventually we got to start dealing with this motherfucker and and um it seems like when your influence does grow there's a there's an impetus to actually go after you where if let's say you were on a hard fade and they're like we don't know how much evidence we have um you know we got to put resources to this and once we start sniffing around it may draw you know may it may defend help this guy create a defensive wall if we go too early without the story but there's also a version where holy shit this guy's influence is growing hand over fist and he's a fucking monster. And nobody's addressing this shit that brings about these kind of reports. Or it could just be, you know, a bunch of eyes wide shut motherfuckers attacking him for doing stuff that they do. I don't know. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations. But I just want to come in and say everyone's the, the it's bullshit and it's a lie and it's an, an attack on my person, on me personally. And it's coordinated and it's the deep state. And it's the establishment and it's the Illuminati and they're putting all this together and these witnesses are bullshit and these women are liars and I've got proof from women who will back me up who were, I, I wasn't fucking her, I, I was, uh, she was in the next room waiting for me during the sexual assault, right? Uh -huh. I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly. Um, you're not. You're not being attacked. Your previous behavior is being addressed. You will have an ample opportunity in court to defend yourself. And the libel laws are much stricter in England. So you got to thread that needle even harder than you do in the United States. Because we don't, we have freedom of speech. In UK, they don't really have it. They don't have it as a, as a pure right in any kind of constitution. You don't have an absolute right to freedom of speech. Um, th so proving like libel and slander and stuff is way easier in the, in, uh, in the UK. And therefore the papers have a much harder time. They are working very closely together. We are. And it's weird. They're working very closely together. And yet in their interviews with the people that they're interviewing, they're hearing the same stories. Obviously, going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. Please stay free. Fuck off, little fucking pit, uh, do your little branded pitch at the end. Stay free. Like a maxi pad. Stay free. I'm trying to hit. I'm trying to use my shit eye mind tricks right now on you. These aren't the rape charges you're looking for. I can go about my getting doing the business. Look at that. Like, I mean, honest to God, it looks like he's trying to hypnotize us. Stay, stay free with wings. Oy. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, BBC did a, a, a documentary on, you know, his, a bunch of stuff that he did, including, by the way, and uh, let me see if I can, um, I'm going to grab this down here. Yeah, there she is. If I can. Ugh. Yeah, this is so gross. Okay, so, um, Russell Brandt, Jimmy Savile, for those of you that don't know, molested hundreds of children just a monster in england and he was on like 
It's like the equivalent of like if you found out that Bill Nye had just brutalized children for decades, right? Um, or Mr. Rogers. It's that bad. Of course, uh, creepy Mr. Rogers which, that you would never let near your kids who's really fucking skeevy looking. But um, Russell, when he was on BBC Two on radio, interviewed Jimmy Savile. And, uh, oh, they closed ca- they turned off the closed captions for this one. I wonder why. Hmm. Uh, have a listen. Oh, oh, oh my God, he's coming. He's- yep. Now, for the record, this is before the charges um, have come out. Uh, this is before Savile's been charged. But everybody knows. Jimmy? Yes. So, Jimmy, this is Russell Brand. I'm sorry to interrupt your meal, but... Um, You're not there... interrupting my meal, Russell, because to talk to a megastar like you is an honour and a pleasure. Well, sir, I could say the very same thing to you, and I shall... Just imagine real quick, if you could, uh, Harvey Weinstein, or Jeffrey Epstein, right before the first arrest, or Harvey Weinstein, when everybody in town is like, we gotta come after that motherfucker. Like, when Me Too's winding up and everybody's like, number one on everyone's list, Harvey, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Now, thank you very much for coming to the phone. Where, where are you speaking from? I'm speaking to you from Hawaii, as a matter of fact. I'm doing Hawaii? my beam. Yeah, I'm away You've making been a- on the television tonight. Uh, yeah, that's right, I was. That, they filmed, um, I'm over here making a film for Universal Pictures, yeah. but I made a little show Hawaii for- Hawaii was on the, on the television tonight, and you're speaking to me from Hawaii. That's right. right. That's right, Jimmy. Have you been well? I, I miss you. Were you, be, were you are you going to start doing Jim Will Fix It again, aren't you? No, it finished last Thursday. I did 40 shows. Wow. It finished last Thursday, and I'm sitting here with a beautiful lady who can't believe that I'm talking to the one and only, uh, supposedly, Russell Brand. <laughs> I am Russell Brand, definitely. Hey, Jimmy, when, um, when I was a lad, I did write to um, Jim Will Fix It, and uh, I was... Yeah, I don't know what the I miss you was, Andy Gordon, in the chat room. I miss you is very strange. Now, it could be on TV because he hasn't watched the show or they haven't. They have just did another season of this Jim will fix it thing uh, where it's basically like uh, make a wish, which again, I know your Michael Jackson alarm bells are going off and with good I wanted reason. to um, meet Pinocchio. Uh, it seems that this was <laughs> this request for some reason wasn't no, taken no, up. No, 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 no. Russell. Yes. What you didn't do was put in a stamped envelope. Oh! And I thought, what a cheapskate this Russell Brand is. What yeah. a cheapskate. And uh, he didn't get it. You're quite right, Jimmy. I, re- I remember now. I just Next was... time, next time, put a stamped envelope in. Oh, I mean, I could just ask you now if you could. Are you going to be doing any more fixes for anyone? Uh- of course, I should be doing fixes long after you're dead. <laughs> I, I believe that to be true. It'd be very nice to meet you one day. Uh, 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 I have to say, um, odd reference from Savile. Um, I think he just, it might be one of his go-tos, but it also sounds a bit like, Russell, you're going to die of a drug overdose. Mr. Jimmy Savile, just, well, you know. if you've got a sister, you could meet me by bringing her along. I, I mean, I haven't got... It's a kid show host, by the Funny way. Sisters, but I don't usually meet fellas, but if you've got a sister, that's okay. I've got a personal assistant called Marsha, and part of her job description is that anyone I demand she um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Well, that's, that's, that's a good start. R- what a kind good of... start. You could send her along to do some research. Would you like her to wear anything in, in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right, so you want Marsha, my assistant, to meet you naked. OK, well, that's, that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> all right. A uh, uh, f- couple things. First of all, um, gross. Secondly, he's obviously trying to be like uh, the second coming of Howard Stern. This is timing-wise about the time that Stern's locked into XM Sirius and somebody's, uh, you know, looking to, you know, you know, be the... Ne- they're, they're, everybody's trying to, like, out-shock jock each other. That said, it's he really does have an assistant that's her name, and that's her real name. And the... And, there's somebody laughing or giggling in the background. Um, and it I have to say, it reminds me of the stories that we've heard about Rudy Giuliani. 
having that woman that he hired on a short leash and then sexually assaulting her. And that came out, you know, she's suing him now. Um, it just, it, it, that's just my, my personal take. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, Jimmy. It's just... The last n- time I spoke like this was the Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. The last time I spoke like this was to Father Christmas. What he wanted for Christmas was a, a naked woman sent there to do whatever he tells her to do. That's to, Merry, Merry Christmas. Yeah. And, and sorry... We're the war on Christmas, though, I'd like to say for the record, you and I. I never trusted those Father Christmases in Debenhams or other stores. They're available. Oh, I said stores instead of shops. I've been in America too long. I don't, I don't trust the Father Christmases you get these days, Jimmy. I think you... Perhaps you should be. Uh, I think you're... Uh, I've always thought of you as a sort of a Father Christmas figure, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I think of you as, as Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. By the way, again, open secret in in England at this point. Oh, solving oh, problems. Under drop in wages. <laughs> Jimmy, it's it's been divine of you uh, to talk to me in this restaurant. Thank you very much. Um, I wonder, could um, would you pass on my best wishes to your beautiful dinner companion, and uh, perhaps you'd consider coming on the show again in the future? Who knows? I'm always available, and my beautiful dinner companion will have to remain secret because she is an outstanding beauty. Ooh. And as such, if you saw her, you would lust after her. Particularly if... Such a fucking weird... Fucking... This, I mean... Ugh. It's... Again, does this sound like the Giuliani tapes? Let, let me... Let me mention something. Anybody on TV, and I'm speaking from experience, um, will get the attention of women outside their league that than they would normally get if they were just schmo in a club and being five, eight and, uh, you know, 160 pounds, fully clothed, soaking wet. Um, at, at, well, and 140 back in the day. Um, uh, I, I was very aware that a lot of like girls that I had gone out, that I went out with after I was on television would have looked, even if they were shorter than me, would have looked right over my head at someone taller and more aquiline and muscular behind me. I'm aware of this. Um, I, I, I've always been lucky to be uh, a, a wonderful combination of arrogant and stupid in my early life that led to uh, confidence and self-assuredness. But you will get the attention of them. How you handle that attention, I think, is about your character. And I, I feel I've done fairly well. Again, I spoke about this earlier, but I, you know, I I can't stop loving the people I've loved. It just doesn't work that way. And hearing somebody talk about who they're with, even on a date, like you should see this piece of ass I'm sitting across from with that kind of an attitude. It's, it's, uh, it's gross. It's fucking gross. I, 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 honestly. I saw her with you because that just heightens the sexuality of the situation. Thinking the no, behind... no, no, I'm not into threesomes. <laughs> but uh, Jimmy, it, there was a time when you were the defining voice of the uh, BBC, and perhaps I still am. <laughs> you are now. You are tonight. But you I should be, am. as well as passing down information, you should be passing along other things. People could argue. I've never. Ew. Passed anything in my life? I only take. <laughs> Jimmy Saville, thank you very much for your call. I think that was supposed to be a VD reference for both of them that just went off the rails. Hey, Jimmy, could we... Honor and a pleasure, and in the words of Omar Khayyam... Oh! oh, oh. (laughs) Jimmy Savile there! My word, what a moment for us all. I may never have got to, you know, meet Pinocchio as a child, but that has been more than made up for by being able to chat to to, to, Sir Jimmy Savile. Mm Mm-hmm. Again. Open secret at that point. But don't pay any attention to that. I was just doing that because I was being sharpish. I was doing a show at the time that got, made me a bit like naughty. People like naughty. Yeah, they like consensual naughty. And this ain't that. Ugh. Fucking gross. Now again, he will have his day in court. I hope. I hope. I'm really excited for him to do this. As a matter of fact, I think uh, what Russell should do is sue everyone straight away because it's a good look. But also, um, I think you should, um, like, uh, I, you know, I think he should hire a big group of, 
like OJ level lawyers, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, because it, it's a good look. Um, and the, the fact that he was like, he's talking to fucking Jimmy. And again, this goes to like the whole like Trump Epstein hangout. Um, I, I don't have any qualms about saying that if I was a huge fan of somebody, and then I found out that they fucking partied with Epstein and were engaged in the same shit that he was engaged in. I'm like, I just fucking cut bait. There's too many good people in the world. Why would you even care? Why would you attach yourself? Oh, fuck. Well, then I just really, I really, you know what? <laughs> there is, there is enough music and comedy and movies and television shows in the world. It's not like you're hurting for, Jesus Christ, we're not in the time where like, you had two books, the Bible and how to make fire. These, and you're like, ah, fuck, the people who made fire, are burning people up, and the people who uh, Bible, wrote the Bible are telling them who to burn. I don't know who I to read anymore. I'm just gonna go, can we yuck his yum? Yes, because it's not a yum. It's a fucking crime. Ugh. Ugh. Just across the fucking board. Um, lock him up? No. Give him a trial. I, I'm for it. Like I said, day in court. Innocent till proven guilty. However, not looking good when you do not distinguish between the women accusing you and the um, the newspapers and uh, television channels that are reporting it when you say you're being attacked. That's that's a cheat. It's, that's like trying to have your uh, um, Donald Trump, these bitches are lying moment and eat it too. Yeah. Yeah. But Andrew Tate supports him and wants him to know he's got his back. 